Hi everyone, welcome to our monthly virtual lecture. As a reminder, this lecture is being recorded and it's going to be available in our YouTube channel in the coming days. My name is Carla Gonzalez and I am pleased to introduce our speaker today, Chris Davis. Today he'll show you how to run gravity inversions in a geologically driven way using Geoscience Analyst Pro and VPMG. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to type them into the Q&A or raise your hand. Please be aware that Chris might wait till the end to answer those questions. The presentation is scheduled to last 15 minutes, but Chris mentioned that running the inversions is so quick and easy, it might take less. So without further ado, go for it, Chris. Thanks, Carla. Okay, so today, as she had mentioned, I'll be using uh, VPMG and um, we'll be looking at geologic data. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in my topography. In this case, it was a data mine model. I'll bring in my gravity data, which was in UBC format. We'll discuss it. This is what it looks like. And finally, I'll bring in my geology model, which could be from GoCAD, Datamine, um, LeapFrog as an ASCII text file, um, wherever you, you do your geologic modeling. So in this case, um, we're assuming that the geology model has already been created. So let me just briefly open this guy up. So here's our geology model. Um, when I brought this in, we actually don't have any information about it. And so what we want to do is try to add meaningful density contrast values uh, to these classes and these units um, that have been classified. So the first thing we need to do to use VPMG is to create a VP model. And we can do this through a block model by right clicking and saying new VP model. Now, VP models, uh, VP stands for vertical prisms, where the prism, um, each prism may have a, uh, has a unit, and each unit has a geologic name, property, and bounds. So I'll need a reference data set, which I have here, uh, to create a VP model. If I had a unit uh, that was specified as air, I could say that, but in this case I have topography, and so I'll put the, the topography down. Although the topography is flat, there is still a little bit of uh, undulation there. And I'll just hit OK. So now I have a VP model. And let me show you what this VP model looks like. So it looks at the surface very similar to what I had when I looked at the block model. However, when I turn on the grid, you will see these prisms are no longer just simple, regularly gridded in vertical. So now each prism um, has a top and a bottom and a unit associated with it. The other thing is if I bring up the ISO values, it's no longer exactly flat either. You can see there's little undulations and this is because it's mimicking the topography. So it's basically a set of 1D um, prisms that have been brought together in a 3D model, which is really useful when you can forward model um, or invert and not have to worry as much, or if you want to take into account the topographic effects. So now that I have a, a VP model, what I want to do is be able to solve for the best bulk properties for density that uh, can reproduce this data set here. So to do that, with Progeophysics, I go to Geophysics and I want to do a homogeneous inversion. I select my data points and my data, and I give it an uncertainty level in milligal. So let's just say one. Then I go to my, my model here. I select that. I need my property. And at this point, I can select upper and lower bounds, but I'm going to leave it completely unconstrained in terms of bounds. I can also go to my parameters here. And if I had specific units I wanted to keep, so here's I can keep certain units the same and only have them active 
I'll let it go as much as it wants to um, in terms of ma maximum model perturbation. And I don't have anything in my property, so let me just go ahead and overwrite that. And I hit apply. And so now it's calling VPMG in the back end. And it started with an R initial RMS of 10 milligal and has brought it down to seven milligal. And I also have density contrast values now for each single unit. So I can see my granite has a negative density contrast. Same with facey six. I can now look at the property in terms of density contrast. Not only that, I have a forward model of the property, which looks like this. So there's my observed and my predicted, and then the residual. So this is telling me what the difference is and what it hasn't been fitting. The interesting thing about this is I really didn't fit the data well. So now I have to figure out why. Is it my model, uh, which obviously it probably is. Uh, I probably also could do some, some data processing here. So to me, it looks like there are some units here that uh, there probably is a regional uh, residual that could be removed. So I'll just do that briefly. So I'm gonna look at the gravity data and here, yeah, definitely a high to a, to a low. So what I'll do is I'll just select some of my nodes on the outside of my data set. And I'm gonna use these nodes, which are the selected indices to create a mask for my trend. So now I have a, a trended mask. And then I just simply remove that trend using just those indices to compute the trend. So now I look at my first order gravity trend removed. And actually this makes sense because um, although I haven't talked much about the geology of the area, we know that there are two units here that are in lower, uh, lower density. We have some granites and we have some uh, felsic uh, volcanics here that should also be, be lower. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna update my inversion and see what happens on this detrended data. So I go back to my inversion and everything's already set up for me. I just need to go to the data and do it with the first order trend removed. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new property for my detrended data set. And I'll hit apply. And you can see now we had seven uh, milligal RMS and now we're down to 4.3. So that's actually, uh, well, much better. So we can look at the property detrended versus the gravity detrended. This is all on the same color scale. So we're, we're, getting, we're getting closer. And now we have our residual. So now we would look at our residual and we decide whether or not we wanted to create heterogeneities within this. So now we have to look at our model because if really, if we're not fitting the data, that means the model's probably not correct in this case. So there's a couple things we need to worry about once we have that. And so this is what the virtual lecture really was about is being able to verify our model. And we've actually verified that we need to change it. And so now the question is how do we change it? So you could either change the surfaces using VPMG and making these uh, homogeneous units thicker or thinner, or you could subsell these and put them into a heterogeneous inversion, either with VPMG, or you could actually straight up uh, move it over back to a block model and use it for uh, UBC. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'll take my VP model here. I'll right click and I'll create a new block model. And let's do, let's do 200 cell widths vertically. And we only really need to go to 13 kilometers. And so this tells us that we have a, a new model that's going to be created. Uh, we can see the yellow outline in the background here. That's where the model will, will end up being. And it's going to create 215,000 cells. So it's brought that unit over. It's now re-discretized this at 250 meters. 
we have this property um, right here. So the, this is the density contrast. So we do see um, that I believe these, yep, these are granites. So we do see the granites being a lower density. Um, and we see a higher density here for facies too. So this at least does give us some information. But what I could do now is I could take this model and I could add it to say a reference model for UBC and, and move on. Or I could put it into, I could leave it in VPMG and I could export the model for VPMG and start to use it either outside of analyst um, separately uh, along with the data. Last thing um, I'll do because we said we would do it for fun and I'm at, uh, I'm at, I have a few minutes left is let's say we have, we have this model here and what we really want to do now is say, well, we have some magnetic data. What does that magnetic data look like? So what I'll do is I'll go back to my units. And so I have these properties and the property doesn't help me now because I need to make sure I know its density. So let me go ahead and change the column name from property detrended to density or density contrast. And I'm going to add a susceptibility column. So now each one of these units has a susceptibility. So for this example, let's just choose this facies three and give it a susceptibility of 0 0.05 SI. We can go to the forward model, select our observation data, uh, in this case, we'll do the points for the gravity. We'll do our VP model. We're gonna do magnetics. So we need to now give it an inducing field strength. Um, and because this is an example, I can kind of make up whatever I want, um, but it is, uh, it is in the Southern hemisphere. So we'll give it a, a nice negative inclination. And for the Kernersberger ratio and the remnant magnetization directions for the inclination declination, we'll just leave it uh, purely induced. And we'll hit apply. And now what we're doing is we're forward modeling, um, assuming we have susceptibility in the same geologic model. And that susceptibility looks like this. So in just a few minutes, I was able to take the model from a, a geologic model and uh, create a VP model, do a homogeneous inversion, figure out the best fitting uh, density contrast values. I could also bring it back into a block model which I could always export and send back to the geologist where we can discuss the physical properties and how we would want to change the model. Or from there, I could further scrutinize the model through inversion. And at the end, I forward modeled. And that is the end of my lecture. Um, awesome, thanks Chris. And uh, thank you to everyone who joined us today. Uh, do note that some of these tools haven't been released yet, but they'll be available in the next version. Um, and for any of you who are in the lecture, we'll give you about half a minute to type any questions you may have. You can also raise your hand if you'd like. In any case, if you do have questions in the future, please don't hesitate to email us at support at mirageoscience.com. All right, so we look forward to seeing you next month when Carla Gonzalez, wait, that's me, when I will be showing new features in the upcoming Geoscience Analyst version 3.2. So thank you everyone for coming.